Ja. Hier sind wir. Oh, we are in English today. Women Matters is in English. I was, <laughs> I was thinking we were in the German group. Women uh, Matters, and we have the, the title, the multidimensionality of our bodies. Unfortunately, the main people, except of Monia, are not here to, to, to talk about that. And so I'm wondering, shall we do that together? Or shall we transport it on another date, maybe on January? But anyway, women matters. We are two women and we can say something to that. <laughs> Right, so. Can you begin to, to, to tell us a little bit about Yeah, I'll just, uh, as you all know, I rely on Wilbur's definition and uh, he defines our bodies as gross, subtle and causal bodies. Well, everybody knows gross body, that's what you can touch and feel and that aches. And uh, he has exercises for you to re remind you uh, how to be in all the three bodies at the same time. Um, most of us are familiar with the subtle body, which we connect with the emotional body. Uh, Wilbur connects it uh, with infinity as well. So you can be, and he gives you exercises, uh, touching uh, your navel and then touching the universe, which is maybe far out. But when you are in an emotional trouble, it may help to remind you that you are more than your emotions. So this is to me, uh, and you do all the exercises with open eyes. You don't meditate. Uh, and you use your breath uh, to breathe into the fullness of life. And when you are really in an emotional hazard, uh, this helps. And then you exhale and return to the light. Uh, so when you are in darkness emotionally, it may help to imagine the light above the clouds. Um, he, uh, you can also see exercises on YouTube, how he breathes and it's quite touching the way he really, all of a sudden you see he changes dimensions somehow. Still sitting there in the cross body, but you know his mind may be somewhere else. Of course, the third body is the causal body. And this um, may not be familiar with everybody. What is a causal body? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the body that is aware that you are more than your cross body and your subtle body that you, where you are right now, the isness, uh, the openness from which everything arises in you, all your thoughts, all your emotions, all your images, um, they arise in the causal body. Uh, a center of this is also the heart. The exercise is that you bring your palms together in front of your chest, the heart chakra. And you are aware of this and every moment and you can tell yourself, I am this isness. I am the openness in which all things arise. So you do not identify with your emotions or your thoughts. You identify with what causes them or what enables them. Maybe I should rather say that this way. And in this exercise, you release whatever there is into infinity, which gives you a lot of space, in my opinion. Um, because when you are really crowded 
in your emotions or your body hurts. And when you open up to infinity, things sort of get a new perspective. So this is about the three bodies and it's always a level of complexity. So the more you leave your gross body and get into your subtle body or your causal body, your perspectives are more com complex. Hmm. I've never talked about it this way, so it's the first time that I try to make sense of it for myself. But yeah, that's what works for me okay, and maybe so for many other people. Ask, um, we know about the aura of a body, no? that we have the body and then some people can see the aura. Has that mm -hmm. to do with it or not? I wouldn't say so. Wait a minute, I lost the picture. <laughs> Here you are. So, um, because well, the, you can take photographs of the aura, actually, as far as I know, Killian photographs. But I don't think that this really relates to it because it's a mental and a feeling state when you get where you get into. So, um, have you seen? Have you ever seen the aura of people, Heidi? I have tried to see aura of things, and I sort of get a, 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 a white, a white uh, surrounding when uh, when I unfocus my my uh -huh. sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know of people who say they can see it, and even in colors. Mm -hmm. I'm asking because I read in the Wilbur text we have on the website the introduction um, that he says it's body, uh, the subtle body. Mm -hmm. And the auras are so energy body. No. Your, your sound is interrupted. I hear yeah, you just... I have unfortunately a bad, bad internet connection. So, yeah. so let's return to what you suggested that the aura is in the subtle body or is a <sighs> Maybe so the subtle body can show. Mm -hmm. mm. This is, uh, I have no, I don't see auras, I don't see uh, colors, but I can sense the mood people are in. But I don't know what organ I use for that what how I see it it's maybe it's even more than seeing it's more experiencing it so uh, this sometimes is really hard when you go in the subway and people just sit there and then you all of a sudden and I sort of I learned how to block it out so um, because having a subway full of Miserable people is just too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I... And what does it help to see the aura? I mean, what does it tell you? Or what could it tell you? I, I, have, I never really investigated into aura. But people say that uh, when there are different colors of auras, mm -hmm then there you can see the quality of the of the person somehow you know the anger i don't know the colors i'm, I'm not an expert in that but um uh, and also the aura can be distorted it can be restricted sort of mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. uh, or it can be can be wider and it can also uh, for instance with people who know each other well they can come together and the aura can can combine the two people yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. well yeah well this is a but there are many other explanations what combines when two people come together and they resonate to each other uh i was just wondering now uh, uh whether you are the way the colors you dress in uh maybe this is also a reflection of your aura so uh when you are, because some people just dress in black and, and gray, at least mm -hmm. now in the winter. And I wonder if uh, when you dress in a lighter color, if this could influence others as well. 
technical problems or are you all right? <laughs> yeah, I know that is, uh, the internet is, is interrupting. So. Oh yeah, I see. Now you, are, you don't move at all. Uh-huh. There you are again. Mm -hmm. Well, let's call it a test today, a technical test. Next time you will be more... Uh, oh dear. The Zoom is... Uh, here it is. Um, it, it's really strange. This is also for in case somebody is watching. This is an attempt to to uh, master the the technology, bringing um, Zoom into uh, via OBS into YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that when I don't have the gallery view, then it's only seeing you and not me. Uh, so I'm trying now to put us onto gallery view, and also have us both on the on the YouTube window, which doesn't seem to be so easy. Why don't I get that? Take your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a little bit, uh, anyway, um, a trial session today. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you continue to, to say something because the people see you, but they see me only partly, but it's also enough. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else? Uh, what kind? Well, let's let's start uh, an interesting because I have been concerned about uh, gender topics, mm -hmm. and I, I'll show you one of the books that is my favorite author, Sherry S. Tepper, "The Gate to Women's Country." Can uh -huh. you? Yeah, I see it. What is what is that? Uh, it's about the difference of male and female approach to things. And as far as the bodies are concerned, I guess there is no gender difference. It's uh, the same for men and for women as well. And uh, when men and women come together in all three bodies, uh, I mean, I'm very sorry that Elizabeth isn't here because I'm sure she can tell us a lot about that as well. Uh, once your spiritual uh, approach um, goes through all three bodies, uh, the int intimacy is different. Of course, you are trained to be aware how your energy flows. Vipassana and how the Kundalini rises through the chakras uh, and this is I guess a lot of a difference to coming together just in the cross body. Uh, Yesterday I saw I, I listened to the Buddha at the gas pump ah, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's a, a yeah. podcast and uh, there was Stan Koff and he talked about that about mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm when you are awakened to this by breath work, I mean, mm -hmm. also LSD, yeah. but it's still uh, not legal. But um, Groff uses holotropic breathing. Yes. Which is also a kind of hysterical state. So you really get everything up and yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says that this is really awakening the subtle body and you can feel it. He says, and maybe even see it when other people are in it, that it's, they have a different as far as I remember, they have a different expression uh, when, when you are. I mean, when you think that subtle body is the dream state, I mean, yeah, when you are in a dream state, it's definitely different. And probably people who see you in a dream state will, will see that, that you are not in the normal uh, state of consciousness, isn't it? Um, well, it depends if you are lucid dreaming. And according to Wilbur, I just saw him on YouTube as well on this topic. Uh, you, once you really activate your causal body, uh, you will start lucid dreaming. So to be aware in your dreams that you're dreaming. And one of the exercises probably is that during the day uh, in your waking uh, brainwave, Mm -hmm. uh, you try to ask yourself, am I dreaming? Is this real? And if you do this consistently, you will do it in your dreams as well. And 
this may help to dream lucidly so that you are aware that you are dreaming in your dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, then you have to know what will you do with this state of mind. And um, yeah, and so it's always good to have some guidelines, uh, ethical guidelines in your waking state that will also guide you in your dream state. You uh, know what I'm hinting at? <laughs> no, it, it, it's difficult because when you dream, you dream. Okay, when you are lucid dreaming, uh, then you are, you could, uh, uh, like a sonambula, uh, you could uh, go up and do some, some stuff, the things which happen in the dream. You could uh, act them out. In, uh, so is it that what you need the ethical guidelines for? Uh, well, what I was trying to get at is that in lucid dreaming, whatever you, uh, whatever you, you let arise will happen right away. So there is nothing in between your intention and what happens. And uh, this might be an invitation for uh, things you wouldn't want to do in your waking state. So uh, as far as the consequences of lucid dreaming are concerned, you have to have a certain basis. And yeah, dream yoga uh, is a kind of yoga that keeps rather close to the waking state. People don't lie down, people sit up mm -hmm. during the night. So, um, and it's not, I talked to one guy who really went into that for years and years and years. And then he came and asked if Wilbur could just keep him, a map, give him a map so, where he, so that he will know where he is going. Mm -hmm. And uh, again and again, to have the integral map is helpful in every respect, in every quadrant, in your interior, in your exterior, in the society, and as an individual. This is, uh, I, never, I never called Vilva a guru or my guru, but he is really the only man I know who provides a map for your consciousness and everybody who is into consciousness business uh, will be happy to find it. So let's still move up to a certain point. I can't hear you. Let's what? Uh, I said, I have understood Wilbur to a certain point, the levels of consciousness, the quadrants and so on. But it, states of consciousness for me are still a little bit missing. I mean, when we talk now about the three bodies, we do have them all the time, don't we? Mm -hmm. But we are not necessarily aware, aware of aware them. Aware of them, yeah. But yeah. Uh, since you mentioned states, um, I just listened to one of the, the pathologies of states. And that's quite, also on YouTube, and mm -hmm. that's quite uh, interesting uh, because your pathology uh, develops without you noticing it. And then it follows you for the rest of your life. So uh, to be aware that your states may uh, put your, your self into hazard. So they may overwhelm it. And Wilbur is uh, an ardent med meditator, and he really, you can see that he changes easily from one state into the next, which most people don't that way. And uh, I guess he even can influence his brain waves accordingly. I don't meditate that much, to my shame, <laughs> or uh, I just found a book about. Uh, without going the spiritual way without meditation. But I don't quite believe it, but I'm, I'm following that path as well. Anyway, uh, 
once you meditate, first you start out with your breath, watching your breath, and then you go deeper and deeper. And then it can become hazardous, and this would follow you for the rest of your life. So you have to be very, very aware of your states, of the states you are in, and uh, where they might lead you. Mm. There is a Groff said, and I heard it from other people, when you once have been in this, uh, let's say, deeply altered state by mm -hmm. LSD or something, then it will change forever your, your life. LSD or, or mushrooms or whatever mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. can use mm -hmm. to do that. I haven't this experience, but I have heard it from other people. So I, I'm wondering about that. How You can reach these states without mushrooms or LSD. Uh, my first experience of cosmic consciousness was just in everyday life and I had done some breath work before and, and cleared some channels and went over some conditioning, which is for me the most important fact that you have to really transcend a conditioning that followed you. My conditioning was to be a wife and a mother and monogamous and yeah. Um, once you transcend that, all of a sudden, everything opens up. You, it's inside. You open, in my experience, it was like door after door after door opened up. And then I looked back at the earth and I saw that everything there was one consciousness, one living being. And of course, I didn't know what to do with this experience, uh, how to translate it into my life, my everyday life. And, but I start, at that time, I started reading all the old religious traditional books. And I found some of the experiences there mentioned there. And then I went to another religion. And actually, then I started comparative religion. And uh, I found that everything went together in one center. And, uh, but of course, um, substances uh, will alter your experience and the way you, and your perspectives, definitely your perspectives. And once you ex experienced a very wide perspective, it may stick, but it not necessarily. Maybe you you sort of go back into your old habits. Uh, and I, at that time, I came from yoga and Tai Chi. And uh, so it's always good to have a basis. And I was rather old already. I was in the end of my, that was around the 30s, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you start very early with substances, start. Get, you just get confused. Start what? At what? <clears throat> no, if you try to get experiences through substances. Ah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Then you, and you do it at a young age, you probably get confused, terribly confused, is my opinion. And uh, the first time I tried a substance under guidance, of course, was in my late, late 40s. So this is rather late. And... Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting, and I still remember some of the experiences. But as you mentioned, psychedelic, uh, this was just too fast for me. There were so many uh, impressions. Um, so maybe I know some in, some people in the integral field who do therapy with substances. Uh, I'm not sure how, how this influences your ethics because your perspective gets very, very wide. And yeah, but no more about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this would then be uh, experiences in the subtle body or where are they? Uh, and the causal body as well. As well, okay. Yeah, because you are aware of infinity most of the time. Yeah. And there are hardly any limits. So it's, yeah. 
Yeah, it's difficult to explain that to who yeah. has never. Uh, I mean, I have experienced it for a short moment too, but it was in a completely different setting and without any exercise, without any, mm -hmm. just came and I didn't know what it was. But um, how to access it again, I have no idea. So. Um, have you tried holotropic breathing? I Oh yeah, I did once a rebirthing thing, you know, mm -hmm. and that uh, did the whole session with the rebirthing. It was a good experience, but it was not necessarily the infinity thing. It was more the experience of of being reborn and coming to this world and nobody there who, who welcomes you and uh, mm -hmm. being very, very sad. So that might be uh, an experience, a re we remember of their own experience, um, yeah, but it might not be something, you know, infinite, universal, something else. Well, again, here at this point, I have to remind you and everybody else, whoever has us to watch this tape, uh, <laughs> shadow work. Because your shadows always influence what you can feel and see and whatever there is possible for you. So shadow work, and again, here we go into the subtle body, uh, transforming uh, the essence of emotions to their wisdom aspect, like angry or hate, to clearness. And so it's, I also found uh, a book about that, and I didn't know that Wilbur went so close with the Tibetan and the Buddhist approach in this respect. It's called, uh, it's by Gendun Rinpoche. I can write it for you later on. And it's called in German, the Große Pfau, how it's called in English, maybe it's the great peacock. Mm -hmm. uh, because a peacock eats poison and gets beautiful plumage. Uh, so you use the poison of negative negativity and transform it into your wisdom, the wisdom aspect. So that's the second part of shadow work, of Wilbur's shadow work. And to me it makes sense. And uh, of course you have to be very much awake and aware of what you feel and how you feel it. And if you can release it, um, yeah. Now you are referring to uh, to what? To the subtle state or to the cross state? Because uh, I, subtle, I subtle, subtle. emotions are in the subtle state. Okay, but I'm now thinking is still about dreams. I, I sort of confuse these things because uh -huh, uh -huh, the uh -huh. dream state. I I notice that I dream a lot, but it's nothing really horrible. It's always, you know, often it, it fades away, but it's some confusion there and stuff, but it's not something which I feel that needs um, further digging deep into it, which I did already about 15 years ago. The Three level years. of your, uh, you're louder and, and softer and uh, changes a lot. Can you can you adjust that? I feel... No, that, it's it's the internet. Oh, it's the internet. After the what we are doing, I have to call again the, the mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. and say mm -hmm. that's not. It's just not workable when they give me this. Uh, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. get the the notice that it's unstable and sometimes it just fades away. Mm -hmm. So, and then it's, notice but that's it's strange mm -hmm. because I talked to somebody else on Zoom and it was just perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, on your side. In maybe. Germany, actually. Yeah, in your side. It's my internet provider here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's it, yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's my internet. Yeah, It says everywhere it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really good to want to do these things when the internet is not working well. So, yeah. Well, that's always it's part of the game. Uh, and I know I have been trying to wrestle down the internet several times. And yeah, it's just a question of time. Well, used to yeah. 
Yeah, the thing is, when I had a new company which has started out two years ago, before I had bad internet also, and then I had the new one, it was perfect, and now they have so many clients, and now it's going bad again, mm. you know, so, mm. uh, yeah, the tech thing, it's good that we have it, but it's not working as it should, at least if you are not a, a company and can afford to buy a huge, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy it as long as you pay a reasonable amount of money. You have mm -hmm. to get what you get. So that's yeah. what, we, what we can do. Anyway, it's interesting, and I I I hope we can uh, repeat this a little bit. I would love to have Victoria and uh, Elizabeth about this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, and um yeah that's okay that's okay but as you as we talked about uh in between <laughs> um i would really like to uh get a closer look at uh, harari's work mm -hmm. 21 lectures for the 21st century and really bring us up to date because in austria we now have 39 young women murdered in, uh, since the beginning of this year, which has never happened before. And this is really what's rather close by. Talking about bodies is, is quite, uh, yeah, it's a luxury, actually. But uh, facing reality is a necessity almost now. Yes, you, so you mean the women have been murdered because of what? A cultural hmm. differences. So uh, ethnics, well, they just use the knives like we no, use, uh, I don't know, a lipstick. <laughs> um, and it's a certain an ethnic approach to women, misogyny, it's called, so women are just objects. And this is something we, we women, in my opinion, we have to stand up against. And it's not the Me Too wave, because this is against your own cultural patriarchal background, but this is a different ethnic approach. And isn't it also when we talk with Wilbur Map, the, the egocentric state or, uh, of, of, of people? The well, it's the, there we have the spiral dynamics. We can best see mm -hmm. the spiral dynamics. It's the red, mm -hmm. so it's the mm -hmm. aggressive power driven mm -hmm. uh, state. Yeah. And so what is needed is the next level, which is. Blue. Yeah, but in the 50s and 60s, so when you apply, when you use your rules and you are glad that there are some you, rules that make living together a little easier and far away from what, and this is one of the problems, what's called the green level when everybody has the same value and every ethnic state is of the same value and that's not true. Mm -hmm. And that's what really is causing much of the trouble right now. And we have that up to the judicial, judicial system. Because all these judges have been trained to be very tolerant to whatever happens and to have deep understanding for the childhood of a, of a criminal. And, um, and even when there are criminal acts, they are sort of yeah, it's not that bad, and they didn't mean it, and things like that. Really, it happened just yesterday, days ago, and it's really, my husband is a lawyer, and a trained lawyer, and he really is up the wall sometimes, standing on a bridge uh, and uh, throwing uh, fireworks at cars passing by, and waiting for actually that something bad happens. And then just saying, well, we only threw some snowballs, which, and even if you drive with a hundred miles an hour and you get a snowball on your windshield, you sort of, uh, yeah. So everybody has deep understanding for almost 
now criminal acts and that doesn't help anything. No, the problem is that uh, we think in our sort of green understanding, as you said, everybody has the right to express their own culture. It's a rule that you can use a woman like you want and you can kill her when she doesn't perform in the way. Right. Right. Then uh, that might be their culture, but as long as they live in our uh, culture, that shouldn't be allowed and yep. should be really uh, an outcry should c uh, come against that. And even in the countries, in a world which we are living now today, it shouldn't be that uh, way anymore. And I would really, as I said, I think in the email to you, I would really appreciate if the feminists of the Western world would take this as a as a as a task to make life of women better in the world and not uh, shout about because they are not fifty percent engineers or fifty percent people in the uh, in the parliament women in the parliament that 's not important important is really that women everywhere in the world have a, a right to live and be self determined and not be the object of of whatever men or culture cultural authorities you know? yeah that's uh, of course the question of education so in austria three women have rather prominent women have started a campaign to provide better education for the girls in these countries but of course once you are educated your trouble really starts yeah education should be also for men especially for the men yeah. You know that how uh, their, their worldview is impossible to 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 be accepted in a world of today. They need to go. I mean, the women need to have education. Yes, for sure. But I mean, the the mindset is that mainly of the of the men and. I have to say, often also of the mothers who are fundamentalistic. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, they had oh, who told me that. Uh, circumcision uh, and it was shown to the men, to young men, how it is done. And they almost fainted. Mm -hmm. it's, but the mothers support circumcision of their daughters because they had it too. They were circumcised. And uh, this is such an intrusion into the body. And here we are in the cross body uh, of a girl uh, yeah. Even it's a mutilation. It's yeah, a it's yeah. mutilation, yeah. Yeah. And that's what we need to do, raise consciousness about that. Yeah. And not about, yeah, Harry Weinstein, yeah, okay, that's not good, but that's not really important, you know, because when you are an actor and want to have a good role, and we, we knew it all the time that in show business, if you want to have a role, you, you need to, you know, and you, you people, I, I don't think that any of these girls who are complaining now didn't have their part in it, didn't try to seek out these people to get their attention. And so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I only know the, uh, from the book of Senta Berger who went to Hollywood and when she was sort of requ requested to lie down, she left. Yeah, so that's the never choice. She never made it to be a Hollywood star, but yeah. <laughs> That's the choice. What I always yeah. said from the beginning, you always have a choice unless you live in countries where you have the knife here. Then yeah. you don't have a choice. Right. But in, right. in these situations, you always have a choice. And if you really want to be a Hollywood star, you know that it's... And for men who are gay and happen to have a, 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 a cinema, how do you call it, a film director who is gay, it's the same thing, you know? Yeah. So um, that's what it is. And if you accept it, then you cannot blame only them. I mean, you can blame them, but please. And this is what you said. Well, I guess <laughs> what they're trying is rather to blame the system, the system of how you become, can become a star is just by either. If you, if you look at it, how many of the main characters of movies married, marry later on the director. Mm -hmm. So there's always an affair in front before that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and on the other hand, uh, it's also normal. When you work together, you might fall in love. Now, when they try to make laws that on the workplace, you cannot have personal uh, uh, yeah. relationships, that's absurd on the other way around, you yeah. know? So right. Right. We, right. We, should, we should come into the idea that we are adult human beings and able to stand up for ourselves. And if we are not, we need to have a training. There are right. enough people, coaches and psychologists who can help you if you feel that you cannot stand it, no? Yeah. So, uh, so I, at least in our countries, you know, I don't think there yeah, is Yeah, we are talking about the West again. Yeah. The West, yes. Yeah. Yeah. In our countries, there is no way to, to complain. No, no, no um, how can you say? Necessity. No, necessity to complain and also you don't have a right to complain unless you complain about yourself you know when you see all sides well, uh, I, as i understood it that many of these women try to attack the system like we have in our skiing instruction teams the young girls there so um, and that's not necessary it's not necessary i mean you, you just to go ahead uh, in your career uh, by being convenient to a man, no. That's, it depends also, it depends on many things. There's enough people who have a certain level of, uh, uh, of celebrity and they have never done that, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it also uh, depends on you, on, also on, uh, on, your, on the quality, what you are uh, offering. Yeah. But it's not only that. You know, so I, I, yeah, the system, but how do you want to change the system if you don't change your attitude? That's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah, you have to change your attitude. And those, that the, these women, these women finally talk about it. It's also a change of attitude because you never yes. talked about that before. That's good. And, that, that, uh, that we talk about it, it's super good. But uh, I was only shocked by the way how little self-responsibility and self... Mm. Uh, uh, well, on the other hand, you mustn't forget that the, the women, or at that time the girls, were rather young and the men were charismatic and they had influence and they had power. And the eroticism of power is always a great lure to women. Yeah, it is. It is. And that's our, our thing and not theirs. I mean, right. we are uh, susceptible for them, for that. And they are ex, uh, exploiting it. Right. And it has also to do that um, m m girls often have a lack of fathers. And now in the, mm -hmm. in the families, when they are growing up only with the mother, that will mm -hmm. be even worse. And so mm -hmm. in older age, they try to find the father, you know. Right. And right. then the father figure, yeah. The father mm -hmm. figure, yeah. And so yeah. that uh, will be even sort of worse because... Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about a very famous Italian actress, Sophia Loren, and she was married to this small, or the Onassis mm -hmm. marriages. Yeah. Sophie. She was married to Onassis too? No, 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 but Onassis as well. He was ah. just a small, uh, ah. uh, yeah, I wouldn't touch him at all, but he was really, uh, I mean, the colors she is one of was one of the greatest singers and she was so dependent on him Sad. so we come back to what you said at the beginning it's shadow work we women have to figure out how to overcome these yeah. these impediments and i see it in myself too i still have many things which i have really big problems to overcome you know now i'm in this situation where i don't really know what to do when I'm now alone again. Mm. Mm. And uh, mm. many things I say, oh no, I cannot do that. And this, oh no, 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 you know? Uh, so the, the confidence for instance, to really now in my age build a business or something, mm. no, it's, it's just not there. And it, I yeah. noticed that it was the whole life that I always thought, oh, that's not, you know, it's not good enough. That's not uh, things like that. And also I know that and I have worked on all these things, but it's still not, you know, I, I, I doubt that you can really change it 100%. I'm aware of it, but where do I get the, uh, the impulse to, to really trust and take the risk and do it and even know what to do, you know? <laughs> it's not 
that you change. It's that you learn to live with it. The yeah. minute you say, I'm not good enough to do that. And there is also the golden shadow. Well, maybe you are, and maybe there's something else you are really qualified for. Oh yeah, I know that because of the I'm not good enough uh, belief, mm. I learned a lot of stuff and I'm good in very many things. Mm. But uh, lurking behind is, you know, I, I sometimes I envy people who just go and do and they have no doubt about what they are doing, you know. In, in mostly our, they are men, right? <laughs> yeah, but also some, some women now are like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. dumb fights, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, going ahead. Although I'm not sure if it is a sort of a, a reaction, uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, anti-reaction, because I was a while in my life too, throwing everything uh, upside down and going like, you know, mm -hmm. and not being connected with myself. I don't know how far that is. And I'm sure some women have, have uh, the ability. You know what is strange with this, um, our... Uh, Kant Chancellor and now the new um, the, in Germany, the new uh, um, leader of the CDU party. They are both <laughs> women and they are both from ex East Germany. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that seems to have been a different in, difference in education. So All that right. these women have less of these sort of yeah. holding back things, yeah. which yeah. Yeah. we still. Uh, Many of us have. But I, uh, since you mentioned not good enough, you are still mourning for Mark. Yeah, that's for sure. And, but, and uh, you have to leave that, give that enough room. It's just... Uh, that's, that's for sure. But I mean, when I see it through all my life, I have started many things, but mm -hmm. almost except the singing, uh, the teaching, which... Mm which was sort of also auto-organized. Auto it was mm -hmm. not somewhere in an institution where I would have had a, a position or something. Uh, all the other things, I never took them to a state where there was recognition, where there mm -hmm. was, where I could say, oh, now I have reached something. Mm -hmm. It's always being good and doing it, but not getting probably not asking for recognition. That's I noticed, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, well, if you really, uh, do you think you are uh, a team worker in an institution? I uh, could be a team worker, not probably in an institution. Right, right. And you need for this to be on the top, you need the basis. <laughs> so, and you are just a loner as far as I see you. Yes. And, uh, yeah. But I, I, I don't feel as a loner being able to do everything. I mean, mm -hmm. already that I learned all this technology that is actually not what I thought I was born to. <laughs> but, you know, and I still struggle with it, as you can see. Uh, and I, I would really love to have a, a group of people, maybe three, four, and create something really together, you know, something uh, which we say in German has hand on foot, uh, something mm -hmm. which is, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. goes somewhere and not just chatting and not just, you know, do a little bit this and a little bit this, but have a well, goal. For this, we, for this, we need a structure. And as far yeah. as I, uh, we have a discussion uh, on Thursday, so maybe we could also talk about this. On Thursday is what? On Thursday at uh, we talk about uh, the German group. You mean I uh, wrote it down. Thursday the twentieth, right? <laughs> uh, ours uh, with the wisdom factory is on Friday. No, 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 no. Uh, not the wisdom factory. Uh, talking among us. I'll check it again, but uh, yeah. as far as I remember, uh, it's on, on Thursday uh, that we talk about the structures of the group. Uh, okay. So is this, is this all right? 
Is this yeah. correct? Yeah. I don't remember anything like this, but we are still uh, streaming. So I think when we want to talk mm -hmm. about uh, organization, we should okay. bring this to an end. Anyway, we women have still to learn a lot and protesting is one thing. Uh, working is another thing. And we, I think we need more, more activities to, to, to come on, not only pro protesting and uh, blaming, mm -hmm. but we have to develop ourselves, develop our males, our <laughs> also the, the children. I, I don't have children, but I think it depends very much on us, on the women, how um, the next generation will deal with these, uh, these questions. And well, it's also the media. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a, a group yesterday, two days ago, uh, and those with small children, it's amazing what the children get from the web. Mm -hmm. uh, soft pornos for children, geared for children. Uh, it's not really uh, offensive, but it's sort of inviting and uh, so uh, they, they really have, the, the teachers and the parents, they talk about it because how can you restrict the children? Because right away you do them something, it's, it's just possible that they can't participate. But all these online games where they have to act as a group, as a peer group, and then they are mobbed, uh, it's incredible. So that's, these are all things we never learned in our generation. The um, thing is, uh, that is with all games and so on, when there can be good ones and they would teach something and there can be the others. So yeah. that is a big chance to use these forms which children like and teach them something valid. But I think uh, coming back to, to, let's say to values, to the levels of development also, I think that's the main thing. Uh, we, we don't uh, have uh, common values. And that makes the things so the things so difficult. We don't. I think many people are not at all clear about ethics and and what what their values are. And so we let it go and hope the best. And that's probably not the best way of of acting in this world at the moment. You know. Yep. So. Yep. And that that makes me at the moment a little bit. Uh, let's say. I don't want to say desperate, but it uh, presses me down the, the inability to somehow uh, influence or somehow do something to, 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 to open the eyes. I could say I have a tendency as a missionary, <laughs> you know, to want to, to have people understand what is going on and what they might be able to do to to change it. There was a, a post of Dennis today about mm. the climate change. It was very interesting and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. positive, yes, but as long, for me, as long as we have still 70%, as Ken Wilber said already 25 years ago, in, the, in low states of, states of development, how, how can we resolve the problems when the outside, the technology is so advanced and the inside technologies are absolutely lacking. So that makes me sad to recognition and then not being able to do anything about that. So, okay, I will now stop the streaming. I don't know if it ever will be something public because uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was also okay. the first test. Yeah. And it didn't work too well, but in case somebody has listened Forgive us. <laughs> we will try to do something better next time. We are not good enough. I'm not good enough. So, of course, it's always you. <laughs> <laughs> okay.